What's the best do-it-yourself interconnect? Hmm. All right, this is the first sort of do-it-yourself question we've had in quite a while. It comes from Sean in Greeley, Colorado, and that's just north of us here. And let's see, basic, uh, so what's the best basic RCA interconnect? I'm looking for some guidance as to what the best DIY interconnect cable would be. A twisted pair, shielded twisted pair, RG59 coaxial cable, instrument guitar microphone cable, four wire braiding, some pros and cons to each. What's an acceptable capacitance and resistance levels for interconnects? From your articles and other resources, shielding seems pretty important, though I know people who swear by braided interconnects. No shielding. Thank you for taking the time to answer all of our questions. Hope to come down and see the new facility soon, Sean. You would be most welcome, sir. You come on down from Greeley, down into the sunny areas, up against the flat irons of Boulder. Wow, a lot of questions there. Where do we start? Okay, um, years ago, Stan and I, when we first started PS Audio, we produced a little book that showed how to make your own interconnects. And it was actually pretty simple. Um, they were called ribbon cables. And what we did, I, I wish I had some tape here, if I had been more prepared. Um, well, here's sort of tape. Uh, let's see if I can, I don't think this is gonna be a very good demonstration. Um, but you can see if I put a red wire here, and we used masking tape because it um, made more sense than <coughs> scotch tape for a number of reasons. Just trust me on that. Okay, so can you see what I've done there? All right, and then you put another piece over here. So what I've done, and then you can make that the whole length. Now this is one hell of a good sounding cable. This is just uh, I usually use like 18 gauge, 22 gauge, something like that. Um, just good copper stranded wire, although a number of people swear by uh, uh, solid core wire. Uh, for making just quick interconnects, I prefer this. So this tape is holding apart the plus and the minus of this interconnect and there's no shielding, right? So how does this work and why does it work? Well it reduces what we call inductance. I'm sure you'll appreciate having that piece of tape on the technician's desk. Oh, by the way, <laughs> a number of you have written in and saying, where the hell's all the people? You, you've got like 50 people running around PS Audio, and every time we see your videos, there's nobody there. It's like a ghost town. Exactly. I come today, well, today is, um, what day is today? Um, Sunday. So on the weekends, I come down and record my videos. There's, it's quiet. Uh, otherwise, it'd be people milling around and then I get a little shy. Right now, it's just you and me, and it's easier for me. So I hope that makes sense. Anyway, uh, here we are, what were we talking about? Inductance. If I take two pieces of wire and I put them real close together, they are going, and, and current passes down here, it, it generates a magnetic field. Uh, and anytime current passes down a wire, it generates a magnetic field. And if another one's in close proximity, we get what's in called inductance. An inductance is going to roll, it, it's like a, an inductor, it would coil a wire. And that inductance is going to roll off the top end of the, um, of the audio signal. Now, the amount of inductance in, say, in a, in a one meter wire is pretty low. So I don't know how much difference that really makes from the measurement guys who's all jumping up and down going, ah, ah he's, you know, he's, he's saying things that I don't agree with. Well, I can tell you that if you, if you take this and make this, see this? Two wires close together and you listen to it and then you put them apart like I showed you on the masking tape wonders, or our ribbon cables that we used to call them, there is a significant difference in sound quality between that and this for this short of a run. So uh, also, the closer you put things together, the more the capacitance increases, which Sean asked about in here. All of those things, inductance and capacitance, will roll off the top end, okay? And there's 
we're not going to get into all kinds of cable theory here because um, that uh, we just don't have the time for it. And, and so that's one way of doing it. Okay. Now, the problem with that is it's unshielded, right? Now, you asked about braided cables. And for a braided cable, we're, we're going to need to get a third wire in here. But that's okay. So Ray Kimber, who's a good friend of mine, has made most of his cable empire based on braided wire. I think he uses four. I think he has different models. He uses like a four braid. I couldn't braid to save my life, but I mean, it, you know, look it up on the internet. I'm sure, you know, you can, you just, what it does, what braiding does is it places, this is very rudimentary. And you can look it up. It places ah, wires at right angles to each other, thus minimizing this. And what does that do? It lowers inductance. So if you, so that means you don't have to have them so far apart so that they, they don't induce, uh, you know, this, this effect that we're looking at. So if you braid it, it puts it at right angles, thus reducing inductance and actually will aid in shielding. So most of Ray's, uh, Ray Kimber's wires are not shielded. They're just braided and they have very low inductance and they have decent shielding properties. So if you get an old Boy Scouts handbook on how to, how to braid, just do, I think a four wire braid's probably what Ray does. I think he does eight wire and four wire. Eight's way too complicated. He makes these machines that do all this stuff. If you can figure out how to braid a four thing, that, that's a really good way of doing it. And I highly recommend it. Ray's cables sound really good. Uh, and what was the other part of the question? Uh, shielding. Yeah, well, let's talk about shielding real quick. Generally, if I have this, and then I take some, this, isn't, this is actually an anti-static bag, but we're going to call it tinfoil because we have imagination, don't we? If I take this and I wrap some foil, ah, I'm not very good at this. And I, let's just let's play that it's tin foil. And I wrap some tin foil around this, and then I tie this foil, one end, not both. If I tie one end of this foil to ground, then I form what's called uh, a, a, a shield. And this will keep out a lot of noise and EMI that we don't want. And it goes, it's shunted off to ground. And then the wires inside are protected. But in the same way that these don't particularly like being really close to other conductors, um, shielding can compress the sound, can make it sound a little compressed. So when we built cables, one of the ways we got around that was by putting in filler that was made from a, a very low dielectric material tubes in here to keep that shielding away from the inner core. So normally it's just wrapped, and you, if you look at some, like uh, you asked about coax, which I'm not a big fan of, uh, RG, whatever that is, uh, I forgot, RG59. I'm not a big fan of those as interconnects, so I'd stay away from that. But, and, and they'll have, you know, a, 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 a big piece of plastic over here and then, and then uh, a braided shield. So uh, that's, that's a way to do that, and, uh, but that gets really complicated. So... Long story short, if you're going to do a not too long pair of interconnects, one of the best sounding things you can do is build the old PS Audio ribbon cables and just take a standard piece of one inch masking tape and line, just carefully line your speaker up so it's like, uh, your, your cable up so it's like that. Put masking tape on both sides, put a connector on each end, and that's a damn good sounding cable. If you want to get fancier, uh, you can make a braided version using four wires, and that's an excellent way to do it as well. <sighs> okay, there's your, there's your quick do-it-yourself interconnect uh, lesson, um, and I hope you enjoyed. Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.